Good morning everybody, it's Mr Nihil here again and welcome to another act of collective worship this week wonderfully prepared for us by Faith at Home so this week our act of collective worship is on the theme of humility which is um, an interesting topic I suppose some of us are more humble than others but sit back and enjoy Hello and welcome back to the Oak National Academy Assembly episode 4 The results are in. What? You heard me. The results are in. Results for what? Presenter of the year, of course. <laughs> oh, Destiny. We're only on episode four. What are you talking about? Now, now, Chris, let Destiny speak. Three words. In. The. Bag. That's all I'm saying. I really think this is unnecessary. Chris, let Destiny get on with it. Okay, in second place. It's me! It's me, baby! <laughs> Top work, Destiny. Good job, well deserved. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter who wins. Oh, put a sock in it, Chris. Destiny, announce the winner. And the winner is... What? Um, excuse me, I demand a recount. That's outrageous, that cannot be right. I don't really know what to say. I don't feel like I deserve this. So you're right, you don't deserve it. That should be mine. Enough, Hannah. You've got a lot to learn, young lady. And today is the day because we are talking about humility. Fair enough. Humility is an undervalued and misunderstood word in today's culture. What does it actually mean? And more importantly, what does it look like? Here's students from St Christopher's Academy in Blackburn to share with us what comes to mind when they think of humility. Being humble is such an admirable trait. Putting ourselves down so that others can go first is not easy to do. But Jesus lived a perfectly humble life on earth, and we should strive to do the same. In Matthew 11 verse 29, Jesus says, I am humble. He's probably the only person that's ever lived that can say this with a straight face and get away with it. If I said that to my friends or family, they'd probably say, oh no, what? <laughs> Jesse Jackson once said, never look down on anybody unless you're going to help them up. I saw this principle in action when I recently watched an advertisement where a classroom of children shared one item of their lunch to give to people who had none. This is an example of humility in helping people up. A story that always inspires me when I think about the meaning of humility is one which my RE teacher told our class. He talked about a time when he saw a man playing football in his front drive with his six-year-old son. Not only did the man go to great lengths to avoid scoring his own penalties, but he also succeeded in the difficult task of not saving his sons. Real words in life come second. I believe humility is so important as you can only truly appreciate the great things you have in life when you put yourself below somebody else. Pride is concerned with who is right, humility is concerned with what is right. As part of the Faith at Home series, we are thrilled to welcome a wide range of faith traditions. This week, we're delighted to be joined by the Chief Rabbi Ephraim Mervis to help us with our topic of humility. When Moses stood at the burning bush, Almighty God appeared to him and instructed him to go back to Egypt to become the leader of the Israelites and to deliver them from Egyptian slavery. Moses replied to God by saying, Who am I? As if to suggest, God, I think you've got the wrong person. But God replied and he said, No, Moses, it is you indeed who must use your potential for the sake of the betterment of all of humankind. 
Moses listened to God and he became one of the greatest leaders the world has ever known. He brought the Israelite nation out of Egypt and they stood at Mount Sinai where on the festival of Shavuot they received the Ten Commandments. We all know how off-putting it is when people behave with arrogance, when they have huge egos and when they are so boastful of their achievements. Moses was just the antithesis of this. He was filled with the outstanding human characteristic trait of humility. But the message that God gave to Moses and which he listened to was, we need to utilize all the ability and the talents that God has given us to become the most successful people possible so that we can enrich our environment with goodness and be a blessing for every person on earth. And then when people compliment us and praise us for what we do, with humility we should say, well actually it's not such a big deal because it's all thanks to God, because he gave me the potential to do this. That is how we can combine outstanding humility with incredible success. Incredible stuff. Thank you so much, Chief Rabbi Mervis. What a great example of humility Moses was. Rick Warren is an American author and church leader, and he once said, humility isn't thinking less about yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Great quote. Here's Grace from St. Christopher's Academy to help us learn even more. Some people, when they hear the word humble, will think of a weak action. But actually, being able to show true humility is something that takes a lot more courage. In Philippians 2 verse 8, it says that Jesus chose humility to the point of death on the cross. That's certainly something very brave. In that wider passage, verses 5 to 11, we're taught that in our relationships with others, we must choose to be humble, just like Jesus. And when we do this, when we put Jesus first, others second, and you last, we get true joy. Whenever humility is talked about in the Bible, it's usually listed with other virtues, such as love, compassion, patience, gentleness, and kindness. I believe that when we choose to be humble, we not only become more like Jesus, but we live out these other virtues too. Thank you so much. So there it is, humility. It's not about being down on yourself. It's about putting others first, just like Jesus did. Here are some students from the Green School in London with a prayer and an idea that we can put into action this week. Look at yourself in the mirror. What do you see? Christians believe that God has made each one of us uniquely in his image. When you look at your reflection, what of God do you see? What are the gifts that God has given you? How can you use those gifts to give God's blessing to others? What does it feel like to look at yourself as a child of God? Look at the photos on your phone. Choose a photo of someone you care for. Look at their face and think about them as a person. What gifts has God given them? What do you learn about God because you know them? Send them a message giving them a compliment telling them what you think is great about them, and then tell them that you are thinking of them, and then try praying for them to know that God loves them. Dear God, you are big, you are mighty, hallowed be your name. Help us to think more about your goodness, your power and compassion, and less about ourselves, our frailty and fear. Help us to think about how we can help others with the comfort you have given us. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you to the Green School, we hope you put their ideas into practice this week and that you think of others more than yourself. We leave you this week with double MOBO award winning rapper Governor B. Thy Kingdom Come is a global prayer movement that encourages prayer. Check out Governor B with some wise words from the youth series. God bless. See you soon. Stay alert and stay humble. If it was ever hate then it's love now. Ain't got time for a grudge now. Life
life just tell me get a choke cold And I promise I ain't ever felt so low Deeper things but now I'm on a road oh Ain't on my own bro, not solo When I roll for your postcode, no joke Look like this flow here is called Stone Cold Stunner Got knocked down so it's time for the come up Fight on my life just know that I run up in the summer of the winner And I'm coming out the winner I've just got to figure in it's getting realer I just keep my chin up, got a look within us Can't stop the shivers, no not beginners Yeah, got some sinners but God forgive us I feel like deep down, all of us want to be loved and accepted. That's the dream, isn't it? Uh, to have people around us that always look out for us and that treat us in the best way possible. Sometimes though, because we're human, people let us down and we get hurt by different friendships and different relationships. This can cause us to become cautious and not trust people. It can even cause us to just look out for number one, ourselves. There's nothing wrong with looking out for yourself. But I wonder what would happen if we had the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords on our side. Someone that had our backs through every single situation. I wonder what would happen if we knew that we were never ever alone. Would it give us the confidence to put our defences down and look out for others? I think maybe so. I do hope you've enjoyed this week's act of collective worship on the theme of humility and that it's given you a lot to think about. And so it just remains for me to say goodbye and also to say that in the week ahead I hope you work hard and that you stay safe. Wishing God's blessing on all of you. Goodbye. <laughs>